general of uh, Nebraska, and he would tell me uh, when I was a boy uh, about being invited as attorney general to address the inmates of the state penitentiary uh, at their Sunday morning chapel service. And he said he got up there and wasn't sure how to begin, just as I'm not uh, sure this morning how to begin. He couldn't say, ladies and gentlemen, that would be stretching it a little bit. <laughs> he couldn't say, my friends, he didn't want to admit knowing a single one of them. <laughs> he felt even uh, fellow citizens would be wrong since he had taken away the citizenship rights. Some of them. So finally, he just began, as I will this morning, by saying, I'm glad to see so many of you here. <laughs> keynoter of this conference. The keynote for public speakers and speech writers for the last year has been fabulous. What a great year for speakers, speech writers, when eloquence returned to favor in this country. When long shot won not only the nomination which they said he had no chance to win as a very young inexperienced unknown black and then won the general election in large part because of his oratorical skills his opponents tried to dismiss those skills as just words just with mere rhetoric, just words. How do they think a president operates? It was just words that enabled John F. Kennedy to galvanize this country behind the program of its first Roman Catholic president. It was just words that enabled him to obtain passage by a largely hostile Congress of the program that he had put forth, including, as mentioned by Frazier, literally reaching to the moon. I was in the house at that joint session, and I could see the stunned, the skeptical look on the face of the members of Congress when the President of the United States talked about literally sending a man to the moon. Just words mere rhetoric, but it was those words and that rhetoric that enabled President Kennedy to go before the United Nations General Assembly and win the kind of support and respect for American leadership and American values that has been sadly lacking these last several years. And that support and that respect turned out to be of utmost importance to our security during what historians call the 13 most dangerous days in the history of mankind, the Cuban Missile Crisis, when two West African, this is a little known incident of that crisis, two West African countries not particularly close to the United States ideologically as well as geographically, denied landing and refueling rights to two Soviet cargo planes intent on flying from uh, Russian territory to Cuba with additional military equipment. God only knows uh, what it was. Just words, mere rhetoric, but that is how a president States operates, and that is why Barack Obama, with his superb team of speechwriters, one of whom you will 
find the saluted on the opening page uh, of my uh, book because I believe in giving uh, credit where uh, credit is due and he served as uh, not only my researcher but as my eyes for the six years it took to write that book. Others in the old days, I know everybody in this audience I'm sure has their own system. I wrote everything out in longhand and edited myself as I went along for decades, uh, whether I was working on a speech or an article or a brief or a letter or whatever. Since uh, losing most of my eyesight, I see a little bit. Uh, in fact, uh, up until uh, January 20th, I used to tell audiences not to worry about my eyesight, that I have more vision than the President of the United States. <laughs> speech writer. 